this day. It is Wednesday and it is June 2nd. We have a couple of meetings to tell you about today. We've got at 9.30 this morning, that's going to go till 2 p.m., is the third budget maintenance review. So that's a long one, but if you want to follow along, you can do that. And then at 2.30 to 4.30, we have the GRF Mobility and Vehicles Committee. And of course, you can follow along with that one as well by going to lagunawoodsvillage.com forward slash meetings. On our show today, we have Kaiser Permanente, Dr. Elena Hetz. Great gal, full of knowledge, and uh, we sit down with her, and she's really a nice lady. And then we have the Laguna Beach Animal Control. Now, of course, they've always got some great information. You know, coyotes are out and about looking for food, so you want to keep an eye out for them, and he'll tell you all about that. All right, our important numbers that we normally tell you about here for resident services or manner alterations. Now, they are on an appointment basis only, so if you would like to make an uh, appointment with resident service, just go to 949-597-4600, and those reservations are available from 1 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Manor alterations is 949-597-4616, and the reservations are available from 8 a.m. till noon. All right, our weather's looking pretty good. It looks like we just might burn off a little sooner today, the fog. We're looking for sunshine this afternoon with a high of 78. Overnight, 63. Patchy clouds tomorrow, 76, 61. Then on Friday, again, fog with some sunshine, 78, 60. Same thing on Saturday, 77, 58. And then Sunday, partly sunny, 73, 64. Our sunrise this morning was at 541, and our sunset will be at 757. All right, stick around, and we will have Kaiser Permanente, so stay tuned. Why do I love being a doctor at Kaiser Permanente? My only job is to take great care of my patients. I'm empowered to do what's right for you. Our digital records mean your medical history is in one place, so I can give you great care. Your primary care doctor, your specialist, it's great. We all work together as one team. Our integrated approach to healthcare helps my patients live longer, healthier lives. I don't just practice here, I'm a patient too. I wouldn't trust my family's healthcare to anyone else. Welcome back. Well, today I am joined by Dr. Elena Hetz, and she is with Kaiser Permanente Orange County. Now, she's a family medicine physician as well as the primary care champion for their Healthy Bones program. Well, Elena, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate it. I'm happy to be here, Lisa. Thank you for the invitation and the opportunity to speak about this really important topic, especially for our seniors out there. Well, exactly. And, you know, the, the subject matter today is osteoporosis. And oftentimes, well, we have absolutely no idea that we have it. And so before we even get into how we would know, can you tell me what osteoporosis is? Oh, absolutely. So osteoporosis, what that word actually means is, um, is uh, porous bone. So if you look at bone under a microscope, it actually sort of looks like, like a honeycomb. So there's the bone structure with all these holes in it, and those with osteoporosis have lower bone density, so those holes are bigger. Mm -hmm. And consequently, the bones are more fragile and susceptible to fracture and breakage. And so that's what osteoporosis in a nutshell is. And you, have a, you made a really good point, Lisa, about, it not, about us not always knowing whether or not we have it. We actually call osteoporosis um, a silent disease because many times most people with osteoporosis have no symptoms at all until they actually fall and have a fracture, which of course is, is very painful. So it's only at that point that we may know, but we do have ways now to screen for osteoporosis. Right. Yes. In fact, um, you know, you do bone density uh, screening and things like that. You know, let me ask you a question in regards to osteoporosis or, or maybe just the fragility of bones. Can, can you have osteoporosis as a young person? Um, well, if you have 
certainly. Most osteoporosis uh, increases with age. Our bone density naturally increases with age. But there are some people so who are younger who may have lower bone density due to underlying health conditions or medications that they may be taking. So particularly people who take chronic steroids or who are on certain um, medications for cancer, for example, those things can increase one's risk. There are certain diseases that put us more at risk like rheumatoid arthritis and um, HIV and hyperthyroidism. So, but generally, um, osteo we start screening uh, when people are a little bit older, unless they have risk factors such as those. Right. Okay. Well, that's good to know because I often wondered, you know, people, I, I have people who break a lot of bones, but then I've been super fortunate and haven't broken anything. So I didn't know if that really affected anybody one way or the other. Mm -hmm. so, so that's why I asked. Um, okay. So let's talk about screening. Uh, is it something that is routinely done? It is routinely done. So basically, um, the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force represent, rep recommends osteoporosis screening. Um, by screening, we mean taking people who have no symptoms at all and just testing them. Um, uh, uh, and so they recommend starting screening for women, definitely age 65, and for men, starting at age 70. However, um, we may start earlier if you have risk factors like those that we had mentioned, and also anyone over the age of 50 who's actually had a fracture. is. Uh, so I think you mentioned knowing lots of people who've had fractures. So yes, unless it was, so for example, a fracture sustained with major trauma, like we pretty much expect almost anyone to get a fracture in a, you know, a high impact car accident, but other types of fractures. So anyone with a fracture over the age of 50 ought to probably get screened for osteoporosis. Does menopause have anything to do with it? It does, it does. So in menopause, our production of estrogen decreases. And that's why women, we start screening women earlier. Um, due, it's that loss of estrogen that affects our uh, bone metabolism and makes us women more susceptible to decreased bone density as we, as we enter menopause. Okay. I, I, I thought it had something to do with it primarily because women who do go through menopause at an earlier age than say, you know, 60 or 65 tend to have the bone density screening. I mean, I, I, most people that I know have had that happen. So good. I'm glad I asked that question. So then at what point do you start getting screening and is it done at the same time as a mammogram? Oh, okay. So um, it can be done at the same time of, as a mammogram, but they are very separate, different types of exams. Um, they're similar, I guess, in that they're, they're both types of x-rays. So one could conceivably um, schedule them the same day, but it's usually actually different technicians that would perform the exam. Um, the bone density test that is generally done is called a, a a DEXA scan. It's a dual energy x-ray absorptiometry test. So you can see why we shorten it to DEXA, D-X-A. Um, and so what they do is they send um, these x-ray beams. Uh, generally, we're, we're measuring the bone density in the spine and the hip, which are the the parts of the body that are most likely to sustain um, serious fracture. Um, and then they compare that bone density. They measure the bone density and compare it to the bone density of um, of a, say, a healthy 30-year-old, and then in that way determine um, whether a person's uh, bone density is in what we call osteoporotic range and might, might necessitate treatment. Um, and the test itself, I just want to say, a lot of people are a little nervous anytime you, you know, say they're going to go off and get some sort of diagnostic testing, but it's actually a very easy test to do. Um, and I think it's covered because it's considered a preventive service. It's covered by Medicare, and um, so there shouldn't really be much of a copay, I don't think, for most people. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, you, it, it doesn't take very long. You go, you make an appointment with the radiology department. You go there, you um, lie on a padded, you know, surface, padded uh, platform. And it doesn't take very long, about 15, maybe 20 minutes, depending on, you know, how difficult it is to get the positioning right, et cetera. You can remain fully dressed. Um, you don't even have to take anything off as long as you don't have buttons and zippers in the way. Um, that's not a problem at all. Um, and then it's, uh, and sometimes if people worry about the amount of radiation they might be exposed to. So I just want to reassure people on that point. Um, it is a very uh, low dose of radiation that's used. In mm -hmm. fact, um, just flying round trip, say, from 
the west coast to the east coast round trip, that is actually 15 to 20 times more radiation than one would get from actually doing one of these little DEXA bone density screens. Wow, that's a that's a crazy comparison. I had no idea that we were being exposed like that. Oh my gosh. Okay, so let's talk about treating osteoporosis. So once you found someone that has, you know, the beginning stages of it, what do you provide? Okay, so so there are uh, there are of course medications for osteoporosis, but before we get to we will we can get to that of course. But I do actually I think that fall prevention is something that doesn't get enough attention. And this is something that, um, that people should be aware of. So um, there are a lot of things that we can do in our homes um, to decrease our risk of falling, like taking out uh, throw rugs and things, making sure we have grab handles, make sure, making sure the lighting is good in our hallways, maybe using night lights, things like that. Um, and a lot of, I think, um, many health insurance programs, including ours here at Kaiser, offer uh, fall prevention and balance training classes. So I would encourage everyone to take advantage of those things. If you are a little unsteady, make sure you're using your cane and your walker because, you know, should a person actually fall and break a hip, it's actually really serious. Um, unfortunately, about 40% of people who sustain a hip fracture um, don't ever return back to their pre-fracture pre uh, level of function. And a good portion end up in, um, in nursing homes, you know, after, after sustaining a fracture like that. And unfortunately, about 20% of people, um, it's a high mortality rate, about 20% of people actually die within the first year of sustaining a fracture. And um, it's from complications of the fracture, complications of whatever surgery they need to repair it. So mm -hmm. it, it is a really serious problem. So, um, so, so fall prevention is one thing. Mm -hmm. Other things, of course, eliminating uh, if a person smokes, any kind of level, any level of smoking or tobacco exposure. It's important to, to get rid of that. And I think most health plans, including us, have lots of uh, tobacco cessation programs available. Um, and then uh, alcohol. Uh, limiting alcohol use is also important. So we try to encourage people to limit their alcohol use to, for men, less than two drinks per day, and for um, women, less than one drink per day if possible. So that's one thing, um, calcium and vitamin D. You've probably heard a lot about calcium and vitamin D and how much should I take and is it safe to, to take all that? Um, so with regard to calcium and vitamin D, uh, generally we recommend about 1,200, for, for people over age 50, we'll just make a sort of a general guideline, a good guideline uh, for the average person over 50, about 1,200 milligrams of calcium per day and 1,000 units international units uh, of vitamin D. Um, and when it comes to calcium, there are all kinds of supplements out there, right? You walk into a vitamin shop or a drugstore, there's so many, what do you use? Right. How much do you need? Um, that 1200 milligrams of calcium per day is really from a combination of what one consumes through their diet and supplements. And actually we absorb better calcium in food rather than calcium in supplements. Um, if you're going to use supplements, we only, you know, you could see, get those tablets that are, I don't know, up to 600 milligrams per tablet, but we can only really absorb not more than, you know, 500 milligrams at a time. So if you're going to take more than that, you got to split the dose and then don't take too much because um, excessive calcium can lead potentially to kidney stones. And then some people have underlying health conditions um, in which they may, their doctors may actually recommend even lower doses. So it's important to be aware of that too. Um, well, yeah, I was wondering about calcium buildup. You know, I mean, there's, there's calcium buildup in our arteries and I didn't know if that contributed to it if you're taking too much calcium. Yeah, yeah. So that's why you don't want to take too much and why it's also better to obtain your calcium through dietary sources. So, um, so of course, dairy products, most people know about that, but like a, an eight ounce cup of nonfat milk is about 300 milligrams of calcium right there. Yeah. Or a, an ounce and a half of cheese and like leafy green vegetables, yogurt, those are good. And then orange juice is fortified these days. So, so, um, so it's possible. So if you can Okay. Focus more on that, less on the supplements. But supplements are out there and very effective. All, right. well, all, all those things you mentioned sound great. So I, I love all that. Now, I was actually going to ask you about the orange juice because sometimes it says that it has calcium in it. So is that added calcium? Yes, yes. So they've added the calcium. Okay. 
And okay. similarly, um, milk is fortified too with vitamin D, which is nice. So um, there's been a lot of hoopla about vitamin yeah. D over the years, yes. Uh, and with regard to vitamin D, um, that's, uh, so again, you don't want to take too much of that. The vitamin D tablets, oh my goodness, sometimes people will bring me like 5,000 unit tablets of vitamin D. That's generally too much for the average person. Yeah. Um, well, actually, there, there's been, there have been some studies that have found that taking more than 4,000 international units of vitamin D um, per day actually uh, negatively affects one's bone density. So you want to limit it to maybe 1,000, maybe 2,000 if you've got a bone uh, vitamin D deficiency. But, um, but vitamin D is actually something that we, our bodies, can produce mm -hmm. with sun exposure. And so um, sometimes, you know, if people don't want to take supplements, you know, it's just as effective to get a little sun exposure, uh, maybe, and it, it's not, not enough that it would increase your risk of skin cancer. Right. Of course. We're talking maybe uh, 10 to 30 minutes of sun exposure just of your face and your arms, you mm -hmm. know, three or four times a week is often sufficient. So, so that's, a, that's a good option for many people. Okay, so it's good to know that, you know, some sun exposure is is excellent. And of course, here in California, we get plenty of that. So awesome. All right, great. And then what about medication other than the supplements that you mentioned? Is there anything else? Oh, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are lots of medications out there these days for uh, for osteoporosis. But our first line medications are the what we call the bisphosphonates. And these are medications like Fosamax um, is a very common one or abandronate. Um, these are these medications are given or actually orally. Um, they can be given daily, weekly, or monthly. And then there's actually an intravenous form of the bisphosphonates. It's given once a year for those who are for whatever maybe medical conditions they're unable to tolerate um, to tolerate uh, you know oral um, medications. Okay. So and the way those medicines work is they um, decrease the activity of osteoclasts, which break down the bone and sort of give you, it's sort of a whole bone metabolism is a, a building up and breaking down bone process. So if you slow down the breakdown of bone, hopefully you'll have more time for it to, to build up. Um, yeah. So, uh, and they are, uh, so there are a lot of options for that. They're, they're very effective at decreasing the risk of, um, of fracture. Um, in fact, those who do get treated for osteoporosis with medications cut their risk of fracture in half. Right. So, yeah. That, that is great information. And I appreciate you spending the time telling us all about osteoporosis. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. All right. We'll talk to you again. Thank you. And we'll be right back after this. Jackie, I'm looking at your MRI. Your shoulder seems to be healing nicely. Well, Dr. Farrell, it feels really good. That's good. And I'm sorry. Baby, don't touch that. I don't want you to twinkle, play with it. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high. Like a diamond in the sky. <laughs> I'm so glad that your shoulder's feeling better, but how are you doing? I'm hanging in there. Schedule a video visit with your doctor and get quality care with no copay. Kaiser Permanente. Thrive. Welcome back. Well, today I am joined by David Peterella, who is here on behalf of the Laguna Beach Animal Services. Well, David, thank you for joining us today. Hello. So I understand that, you know, the coyotes, they're not afraid. We still have to worry about them. And there's a variety of things that we should be looking out for uh, right now in our community. Can you, can you give me some ideas of what, what you've been seeing lately or what you've been hearing? We've been seeing a, an increase in coyote activity. Um, this is probably partially due to the fact that the uh, drought ended a couple of years ago, and so we're just seeing more wildlife in general. But it's also the time of year for coyotes to, uh, for the families to, to kind of break up and the juveniles to kind of move off on their own. So it's not unusual for us to see increased amounts of coyote activity in October, August, September, October-ish. And I think that's what we're seeing right now. 
Okay. Now it is going to be, um, you know, fairly warm here in the next couple of weeks. And so yeah. is it something that would also draw them out like closer to the water areas? I don't really know. We seem to have, well, anywhere in Laguna Woods, there's going to be a water source because there are sprinklers everywhere, mm -hmm. you know, so it's not like we have a lot of dry spots in Laguna Woods. So there'll be water sources. The creek, uh, Aliso Creek still has water in it. Uh, so it's probably not necessarily having to do with the water. You might see it a little bit more uh, coming in from the wildlands w later on in the season. But right now, like the lakes are all still really full of water. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And then, so the coyotes, you know, they are opportunistic and, and they like to find things, little dogs, yes. and cats, yes. and all sorts of uh, animals. What would you recommend people do? So uh, keep your, in Laguna Woods, people are pretty good about keeping their pets indoors, uh, but like bird feeders, be sure and clean up those because while coyotes will eat those seeds, those attract things that coyotes eat like squirrels and rats and things like that. And wow. so we're just adding to the mix. Uh, it also attracts birds and, and coyotes will go after birds. So anything that would attract, something that would attract a coyote, we, we kind of want to keep under control. Uh, keeping a uh, close eye on our dogs and cats. Uh, we seem to be, for a while, Laguna Woods was pretty good about uh, keeping their cats indoors, but I'm beginning to see more and more cats outside mm. and that's gonna be unattracted. Especially if, you know, people, there are some people that take their cats out at a set time every day, which is predictable behavior. And coyotes will take advantage of our predictability. Uh, mm -hmm. Most people walk their dogs at the same time every day, feed their dogs at the same time every day. And so every day, you know, the coyote knows that this is what's going on. So we wow, gotta so not be predictable. So they have that much of a sense to know, okay, at about this same time every day, that little yeah. animal is outside. Yeah. You know, when you consider that just about every other predator in North America is on the endangered species list and coyotes are at a level that they can be considered a pest, they're incredibly adaptable. They're probably the most adaptable species we have, including us. Wow. So, you know, they, they learn and they learn well and they do very well and they thrive on when we become complacent. Okay. Now, I know, uh, you know, some people, I think most of the people here in Laguna Woods are pretty aware, but... Um, I had mentioned to you that we had someone send in a photograph of a yeah. of a coyote, and I, I don't know how far away it was, but nonetheless, it looked very strong, and it looked like it was just ready to take on the yeah. world. So what are yeah, some- Yeah, so it may, be, it may be in one of those juveniles that have just recently, you know, gotten to be an adult and, and, and is, is taking on the world right now. Um, I, I've kind of been running into a lot lately of people who have recently moved to Laguna Woods and ordinarily this time of year we would ordinarily do like some kind of a community meeting at one of the town halls or things like that and we obviously can't right now right. so I you know I, I've been trying to go out and get the word out there for those who aren't familiar with this we don't seem to have as much of a problem with people who have been in Laguna Woods for a long time they're kind of used to this but it seems like we're getting more and more people that this is something that's completely new for them. Well, yes, we have a lot of people that move in here on a regular basis, so I'm assuming yeah. that's the case. So if someone was concerned or they had questions, where would you recommend they go? Uh, they can give us a call. Our number is 949-497-0701, uh, and then just ask for the animal services officer on duty. Okay. Um, and we will come out and talk to you in person. We will talk to you on, on the phone. You know, we try to do, like I said, the community meetings, we try to do this, we try, but if it comes down to talking to people as individuals, then we'll do that too. Okay, and do you guys have a website? Yeah, you can uh, go to coyotes at lagunabeachcity.net. That is um, an email address that you can report coyote incidences to, oh. uh, and we will keep track of them. As far as like a, an actual, uh, website there is the city of laguna beach and then just uh, go to the police department and find animal services okay good okay that would be good maybe they'll have some education there that they might be able to brush up on okay perfect well i appreciate you taking the time thank you thank you very much all right we'll talk to you again all right bye and we'll be right back after this At Laguna Woods Dental Care, our goal is to serve and provide dental services to the residents of Laguna Woods. Dr. Mohsen Mahmood is currently specializing in senior dental care at USC School of Dentistry. 
Here at Laguna Woods Dental Care, we are up to date with the latest technology. Our top priority is your overall wellness, ensuring your current medications do not affect your oral health. We offer an affordable membership plan that includes cleanings and deep cleanings if recommended. We're located outside Gate 3. Call us today. Let's take a look at our movies that we have coming up for the weekend. On Friday, we have The Accountant, and that is with Ben Affleck. And you know, it's a really good movie. I liked it a lot. And uh, you can watch that this Friday at 2 p.m. with subtitles and 6 p.m. without. And then on Saturday, we have a Korean film called Minari, and that um, is starring Stephen Wen, and he is a showing a Korean-American family that moves to an Arkansas farm. And you can see it on Saturday, 2 p.m. with subtitles and 6 p.m. without subtitles. Now, just a couple of announcements that I have for you. You can see baseball right here in Orange County, not having to go all the way to the Angels Stadium. You can actually watch OC Riptide right here at the Great Park. And it is at the baseball complex on Irvine, and that is already it's uh, starting June 8th to August 1st. And if you wanted to go, you just go to ocriptide.com forward slash, slash schedule and you can see what is happening there. Um, also, just wanted to give you a heads up that the Hearing Well Club has now become HLAA. And that is an organization, a much larger organization, uh, that can help with lots of different things uh, according to Tony Barriant. And they are having a hearing uh, event that's June 8th, and that'll be at 11 o'clock in the morning. And if you would like more information, you can call Tony uh, at 949-614-5307, or you could email her at tony at hlaamv.org. And I uh, just wanted to remind you that uh, car washing and overwatering is not acceptable here. Uh, in our community. Now, there are different rules for different areas in which you live. Third Mutual says no car washing allowed at all, but there are limitations in United Mutual where you are allowed, but you must have a hose with a shutoff valve and a sprayer. So make sure you are following those guidelines, otherwise you could technically be fined. All right, let's take a look at our weather one last time. Of course, it has already burned off the fog, and we are looking at sunshine all day today. We are looking at a high in the 70s, around 78 today, 63 overnight. Tomorrow, 76, 61, then 78, 60, 77, 58, and then Sunday, 73, 64. So looking pretty much the same all week, but nonetheless, a lovely day here in Southern California. You can re-watch our program today at 12.30 and 5, or you can just wait until tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Have a great day in the village, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.